You know, China is reaffirming its support for Iran, head of expected retaliatory attacks on Israel that may come in the next few days. China's foreign minister telling Iran's acting foreign minister in a phone call yesterday that Beijing supports Tehran in defending its, quote, sovereignty, security, and national dignity. Beijing also repeating its condemnation of the assassination of Hamas's leader, saying the strike undermines ceasefire talks and threaten regional stability. I want to bring in Gatestone uh, Institute senior fellow, author of The Coming Collapse of China. China and China is going to war, Gordon Chang. Uh, talk to me about China's involvement in all of this and how far and how deep do you think it goes, Gordon? Yeah. Wang Yi's comments yesterday were really goading Iran into attacking Israel, just saying, look, first of all, um, Iran has a right to defend its sovereignty, as you point out. And it said that the killing of Hania, the Hamas political leader, was a violation of Iranian sovereignty. That's a clear green light. Now, the problem for China is that it was waging a proxy war. Hamas is a proxy of Iran. And the way the Chinese look at it, Iran is a proxy of China. And, you know, that's a great strategy if your proxies are doing well. But now they're not doing well. And China understands that it's not only on the back foot, but it's taken a real hit in the region with the killing of Hania. Well, that's interesting you say that, that China is really pulling the strings in all of this, because if you look at, uh, there's a piece by the editorial board of the Journal this morning, Wall Street Journal, and they say that they talk about the new Iranian nuclear reality, and they, they basically, this report uh, from David Albright and Sarah Burkhardt that basically says that Iran's development has quickened uh, in the last few weeks when it comes to uh, nuclear capabilities, and that's a very disconcerting uh, very disconcerting thing. And Trisha McLaughlin's got also a, a Iran question for you, Gordon. Gordon, thank you so much for your insight. It's it's always fascinating. Um, I wanted to ask you about the reports that came out over the weekend about how the Trump campaign was the victim of a cyber attack by Iran. Um, can you talk to us more about how our adversaries, China, Iran, Russia, they're really looking to interfere in U.S. elections? What do you make of it? Do you think they're just trying to sell chaos, or are they trying to tilt the scale? Well, Xi Jinping's general policy is to sow chaos. But in this particular case, I think what we're seeing is that Iran is voting for Vice President Harris. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it hacked the uh, Trump campaign to disrupt it. And, you know, we're starting to see the first signs of Beijing's attitude on this campaign as well. And they're also weighing in on the Harris side because on TikTok, it's being flooded with anti-Trump videos. And that's a clear signal that uh, Beijing has decided where its sympathies lie, because they control what goes on TikTok through the curation algorithm. And so we're seeing these bad actors all line up against Trump. Well, and the, the Wall Street Journal talks about this. You know, they're reporting that China's nightmare is a second trade war with former President Trump. And, you know, he, but by the way, you know, Trump has said he's going to raise tariffs on Chinese imports to 60% or more if he wins in November. The Journal says that the economic damage to China would be much steeper than in Trump's first term because the tariffs obviously would be higher and that China's economy right now is a lot more vulnerable. Do you agree with that assessment? Oh, it certainly is, because Xi Jinping, who's turned his back on increasing consumption, um, has only one way to rescue the Chinese economy, and that is to export. And that means uh, Xi Jinping, the grand Chinese leader, has put the fate of China, uh, and not only its economy, but also its political system, in the hands of others, including the United States, its most important market. So when President Trump talks about tariffs of at least 60 percent, and he said that to Maria um, in February, mm -hmm. it basically is closing off the Chinese market, uh, the U.S. market, to most of China's goods. And that means that's a death sentence on the Chinese economy. The Chinese know it. And that's why I think they are very much decided that they're going to disrupt the Trump campaign, which is what they did in 2020, because in 2020, the evidence is overwhelming that they were working hard to make sure that Trump was not reelected. Yeah, no, no, no. And the, and the TikTok videos that were pro-Harris were instant uh, after Biden stepped down, uh, which we, we've discussed. Marie and I have talked about that. Gordon Chang, it's great to see you. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, Cheryl.